Hello everyone, on this episode I'm going to be talking about Indiana Jones and the White Witch. This came out in 1993 and was written by Martin Kaiden. I believe this is the last Indiana Jones book he wrote. And it takes place in 1930, so we're getting pretty close to when the movies start. So I guess Temple of Doom was 1935, so yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, I kind of like this book. I didn't really care for the first third. Basically, Indiana Jones is in England, and he and Gale, the chick from the previous book, Indiana Jones and the Sky Pirates, are basically together, and Gale is, I guess, kind of related to these Wiccans who live in a secluded forest in the woods of England and stuff, and their Glenn actually gets attacked by a armed group of professional killers, and you know, a good bit of the village is killed and a lot of the children are taken hostage and they're basically looking for a treasure map that the Wiccans of the Glen have. And so Indiana Jones and Gail have to go there and, you know, basically find out what the hell's going on. And once there, they meet a woman named Catelyn, who is basically immortal because she has Excalibur. <laughs> yeah, so that's okay, okay. So, yeah, I, I was just like, all right. I mean, the Indiana Jones books have had a lot to do with the Arthurian legend and Merlin and um, all the Celtic stuff. But, I mean, this was a little more heavy-handed than I would have liked. But, um, you know, there's always got to be some supernatural stuff going on. It was just, this was kind of kind of weird. Um, but, I mean, it ended up being okay, um, basically my favorite part of the book was in the middle when, um, Indiana Jones and, uh, Gail have to go to, I believe it was America, and they're having to take the Graf Zeppelin from, uh, Germany all the way, I guess, across the Arctic and stuff, and down into New York City and stuff, and that was a really cool part, because they're having to fight the bad guys on the Zeppelin, and, it was, a, it was a really cool part, and Martin Kaiden is a, you know, big aviation guy, so he, you could tell this is his passion, describing how the Zeppelin works and everything, and the history of it, and, you know, the captain flying the airship was actually the real captain, what was his name, Eckner, Captain Eckner, he was like a pioneer in uh, Zeppelin technology, or dirigibles, as they like to call them, but... Yeah, I mean, it, that was a really cool part, and the uh, last third of the book was, it was okay. Basically, the treasure ends up, basically, the treasure is a bunch of gold coins from, I guess, the ancient Romans and stuff, and it's been passed down through the ages, kind of like, I guess, like, uh, what was that movie, uh, National Treasure, almost. And it ended up being in the hands of the British who sold it or who gave it to the Confederacy during the American Civil War to buy cotton with. And so the Confederates were the last ones who had the treasure. And so the map kind of shows where they took it. And, uh, you know, it goes into the uh, Battle of uh, Ulsti, I guess is how you say it, or Lusti, something like that, which was the biggest Civil War battle in the state of Florida. So that was kind of interesting, and uh, Martin Kaiden was accurate with his description of the battle, so that was pretty cool. You know, me being a big Civil War buff, I found found that interesting because I'd never heard of the battle before. So, yeah, it was, uh, that was kind of cool, and, um, you know, the ending was all right. I mean, it was, it was an okay Indiana Jones book. You know, I really want to do some, you know, tomb raiding and stuff like that with Indiana Jones instead of espionage and stuff, but, you yeah. know. I'll take uh I'll take whatever they can give me more or less. But um yeah, I uh I like this book, okay. Um the next one uh, I'm pretty excited about. I don't even remember what it's called. I think it's Indiana Jones and the Philosopher's Stone, but if you look at the cover, it's got Sala on it. I wonder if this is how Indiana Jones meets Sala for the first time. So I am definitely looking forward to that. And um Honestly, probably the part of the book that I really enjoyed the most now that I think about it is uh, basically at the end of the book, Martin Kaiden is describing how he came up with the idea for all of the events in the uh, in the book. And he was actually really good friends with like a Wiccan witch in England. So naturally, he drew from his experience with that. And he's a huge aviation guy, flies all kinds of old aircraft around the world and stuff. So all of the aeronautical parts of the book were drawn from that. And he's also a Civil War buff. 
And I think he said that he actually got to reenact the Battle of Ulsti, so that's why I picked that one specifically. So, yeah, Martin Kaiden's a really, really cool guy. He's like almost like a real life Indiana Jones, so he would be a cool guy to have a conversation with. But, um, like I said, I think this is his last Indiana Jones book, and so his two books were okay. Naturally, the second book, Indiana Jones and the Dance of Giants, is still my favorite. Well, actually, probably the novelization of Raiders is my favorite, but as far as the non-movie books, yeah, Dance of Giants is still my favorite, but um, yeah, we'll just keep going with this series. I mean, this one was all right. It took me a while to get through it, just because I was not digging the uh, Wiccan aspects and Celtic magic and stuff and uh, stuff like that, but um, you know, it ended, uh, it ended up being okay. Well, anyway, guys, I'll see you next time. Take it easy.